I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. And if you're new here, my channel is dedicated to all things photography from the perspective of a full-time working photographer. Normally I go into this long spiel where I talk about how awesome I am and show my impressive client list, but a lot of you get mad about that. So I'm not gonna talk about that I've done 100 assignments in the New York Times. I'm not gonna talk about my own commercial photography and video production business. I'm not gonna talk about my picture being a global ad campaign for like. I'm not gonna talk about that stuff because you guys aren't here for that. You've already heard it. Today I'm gonna to talk about some common mistakes that all photographers, all levels, all genres make on their personal or professional websites and how to fix those mistakes. So fire up your website, get it ready, put it off to the side and see if you make these mistakes and get ready to fix them because I'm gonna check. <laughs> Before we get into that, you guys don't forget, I do sell some things on my online shop. You can see that in the description box. I'm not gonna go into my whole spiel. I'm trying to keep it a little bit short today, but also make sure you guys participate in my weekend assignment challenge or WAC for short. Every Friday on my Instagram and on YouTube, I release a theme and you have until Monday to submit your best photo for that theme and you can win a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one photography consulting session slash portfolio review with me. So make sure you enter. I'll also put the link to the contest rules in the description box as well. So the first mistake I see people make, and this is a big one, not all of you do it, but a lot of you are guilty of this, is not naming your website your name. Of course, the exception is if you're, you know, wedding photography studio, you might say blah, 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 wedding photography, or if you own a commercial production business or a photography studio, you might want to add that. But for the most part, just call your website your name. Okay, if someone else already has the URL, like you're John Smith, fine, but like, don't just don't, don't, I know you're gonna wanna do it. Just resist. Don't do that weird like photography phrase thing or like photography related name, you know, like, you know what I'm talking about. It's like people have like eye for, eye for pictures, you know, the rectangle maker, shadow chaser, the moment snatcher, I don't know, like just, just don't do it. It doesn't look professional. Even if you're not a professional yet, you're just an amateur and you do it on the side. Just make your name because you never know. You might want to become a pro or you might want to make your website look a little more professional because you're selling prints or something like that. Or you might want to do some just work on the side, but just, just make it your name.com. I know it's tempting. You want to do it. You want to be different, right? But in this, most of the time, I want you to be different. But in this case, don't be different. Be you. Literally, just be you on your website. Number two is to edit down the number of galleries on your website and then edit down the number of photos within those galleries. You don't need to put those galleries up there, those portfolios up there with 150 pictures. You don't need 100. You don't probably even need 50. Like 25 usually cuts it. I know you think you've got 50 awesome pictures, but you've probably got a ton of redundancies in there. You've probably got pictures that don't need to make the cut. And then within those galleries, pay attention to the sequencing of your images. Like stop putting in repetitive images, stop putting images that say the same exact thing, cut it down. Become a better editor of your own work. And if you're not a great editor of your own work, get better and, not or, and have a friend edit with you. Someone that you respect and has a good eye and just can offer you an alternate perspective on your work. Also guys, just within those galleries, those photos like, Stop it with like the 25 pictures in color and then just randomly putting in one picture in black and white. I love black and white, nothing wrong with that, but make a gallery of black and white or if it's in a hero portfolio thing, like make a sequence of like 10 photos in black and white or five. Don't just like randomly throw a black and white picture in there, a sepia picture in there, like amongst a gallery of like a bunch of color images. Just, just don't, it just doesn't look professional. It doesn't look good to the eye. It just, just bad all around. That leads me to the next mistake people make is not having your galleries organized. Your opening gallery on your website should be your portfolio, right? That's what you should put out there. That's the best thing to do. A lot of people put some random gallery in there, some story that's not really a story or just like, uh, or some gallery from like travel pictures from some trip they went on. Put your best work up front. People aren't gonna spend a lot of time on your website. People don't have time anymore. They're gonna look at your website and make a snap judgment. So first and foremost, your leading image better be awesome. That leading image better punch people right in the face and make them want to look at more of your work. So really put some honest, deep thought into what that first picture is. Make sure that image not only punches them in the face, but also make sure it represents who you are as a photographer stylistically, what kind of work you want to get hired for, and just what you're into as a photographer. And that can change and that can evolve. For me, it has changed. You know, I used to do a lot of assignment work, so I'd put that up front. I started doing a little more commercial work. Before I made my own separate commercial photography website, I would mix in a little bit of commercial work early on because I wanted to get hired for that kind of stuff. And then now, as I've pivoted my career and focused more on wildlife photojournalism, you're gonna see that's what I lead with because that's what I'm passionate about, that's what I want to get 
hired to do. That's what I want to be known for. How about that? Pretty simple. And then don't feel the need to force galleries. If it's early on in your career and you don't have a lot of portrait work, but you want to get into that more, take like your few best portrait shots, put that in your portfolio gallery. And then something you can do like just to motivate yourself is behind the scenes in your website without making it live, like have a portrait gallery and start to fill it, right? Start to put images in there. And once you have about 15 solid images that you feel represent who you are as a photographer, then make that gallery live. And then really put some thought into like what's gallery worthy. A lot of people did that like one cool trip that they brought their camera on and or there's a workshop and they're fascinated with like maybe you came to Vietnam. I see a lot of people with their Vietnam gallery, right? And you came to Vietnam, you took some photos and then you've made like a whole separate gallery about Vietnam. But does it really make sense in your website as a standalone gallery? Maybe there's a few pictures in there that are awesome, sure. But are there 25 or 50 good pictures? Or more likely you've got five or 10 really awesome pictures and take those images and put those just in your travel portfolio. You don't need that like whole list of different places you've been to. It's confusing, it's overwhelming, and it's just it's just cluttered. The next thing on my list is not really a mistake, but more of a piece of advice. If you are interested in selling prints of your work or just selling your work for stock, make it so you, people can purchase things directly through your website. And that usually does take a little bit of an investment up front. For me, I pay a higher monthly subscription rate for Squarespace so I can sell things directly through the website, but it makes a world of difference. Since I converted my website to a business plan and I can sell directly, people can pay directly to my website, I've sold way more prints of my work. I have a whole separate episode about selling your prints online. If you stay to the end of this video, check it out. I'll put up a link to that video, but it's very, very helpful for all of you interested in selling prints of your work online. The next thing I'll talk about is the contact page. This one, not too complicated. Just make it short, make it simple, and just make it easy to find, right? Don't make it complicated. If someone wants to hire you, make it easy for them. That's all. That's all I'm gonna say about that. The next thing I wanna talk about is your about page or your bio page. First and foremost, let people know right up front where you're based, where you are, and don't put that like, laundry list of places like, well, I'm based in Hong Kong, I summer in the Hamptons, I winter in Norway, like, okay, if you do split your time between two places, fine, put that up there, make it clear. Just don't make it hard for people that wanna hire you to know where you are. It's an extra question, they have to ask an email. If they're not sure, they might just not email you and ask you at all. So like, for me, I say I'm in Hanoi, Vietnam, so people know they can hire me. Of course, you can say you're available to do assignments anywhere in the world, that's fine, but just let people know where you are, let them make the decision if they wanna hire you or not, you know, but just stop it with that long list, of trying to look cool. You know who you are. I know who you are. I've done it too, so I'm kind of talking smack, but I've done it as well. But I stopped. I'm recovering laundry list of places that I live, guy. And also on the about pages, yes, it's nice to inject something personal about you, like you like long walks on the beach or you like your whatever, whatever you wanna say personal, that's fine, but don't make it like all about that. Talk about something personal, that's that's nice, but mention like what your passion is photography, use this as a way to show some of your client list, that's what I do, put some of your biggest clients up front. And I'll also use this to rant about like, don't, if you haven't worked for a client, don't exaggerate, don't put it on there, like don't, don't, don't bull about that, people know. It's not good for you, it's not good for other photographers and it's misleading, it's wrong, it's wrong for the industry, so stop it. So if you won like a National Geographic like monthly Instagram contest, don't say you've shot for National Geographic, just don't. Like if you've done an assignment for them, sure, put it on there. If your work has been published in National Geographic, sure, put it on there. But again, like the monthly photo contest and they chose your picture for the top 10 and you put your Nat Geo, ah, don't, don't do it. It's, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's a lie, it's bull. Like I know it's tempting, but go and earn it. If you wanna put that on your list, go earn it. Go get the work that's gonna get you hired to work for those kind of clients. And then once you work for those clients or your work's been published in those magazines, then put it on your website. It's something to strive for. Lead with your most impressive clients. Lead with the clients that you wanna get hired to do work for. Before I used to lead with a lot of my editorial clients, but now that I'm doing more work in the wildlife photojournalism spectrum, I do lead with those editorial clients because I like those brands. They reinforce who I am and I'm proud of who I've worked for. I won't mention the New York Times. I will mention Forbes. I will mention my work's been published in National Geographic, but I also put in a lot of the animal related NGOs and organizations that I've worked for as well because that's the kind of work I'm focused on now. So I'm always changing that. Just like your portfolio, keep your bio updated as well. Another thing I like to add here in the about page, this one's going a little bit long. I'm saying don't make your bio page too long, but I'm going really long talking about your bio page. But anyway, your about page, like if your website, if you're a wedding photographer and your website's like about wedding photography, like make sure you say something in there about loving wedding photography or that you like it at least. Like I see people make that mistake because they want to show that they like love black and white street photography. Like if your website is dedicated to wedding photography, like yes, you might say you also like street photography, but like, don't make that your big chunk and your small chunk. Like, oh, like he or she also likes to shoot weddings. Like, whatever your thing is, like whatever you're hired to do on there, be, be proud of that, own it. Just scale that properly, you know what I mean? Like, 
Understand that? Put some thought into that. So this went a little bit long today and I've got a lot more things to talk about because you guys are making a lot of mistakes on your website. But again, I told you I made these same mistakes. That's why I'm bringing them up. That's why I'm aware of them. So I'm going to make part two of this. So stay tuned for that. And don't forget to check out this video I made here about selling your prints online. I think a lot of you could find this very, very useful. And if you guys are interested in participating in my free weekend assignment challenge, check that out as well here. I'll put a video to the rules here. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.